All right, welcome everyone. Um, we're in January. We've got a lot uh, on the on the agenda for today, so let's just go for it. Um, introductory materials. Here's our agenda for today. Just a few updates, and then we're going to get into planning for uh, our meetings for this year, and and hopefully the majority of the uh, time today will be on um, <clears throat> discussing this focus group or subcommittee to look at um, supporting uh, our all of us learning how uh, learning about local government, municipalities, et cetera, policy and practice. Um, <clears throat> we are recording. As you know, stay muted unless you're speaking up, please. All these recordings are here at wikiwatershed.org slash DRWI. Um, <clears throat> the meetings are every third Thursday of the month, always 2.30 to 3.30 in the afternoon. Zoom link is always the same. Keep that for your records if you like. Um, I send an email out a week prior and then in the morning, usually. Um, all are welcome. Let us know if there's others to be added to that email distribution list. Those that are attending are often working in the Delaware River Watershed Initiative, or they're just working in the Delaware Basin, but not necessarily directly associated with the DRWI. And we've got some folks attending from outside the DRB. Um, <clears throat> we're paying for this, these meetings and Stroud Center support these days with DRWI funds and with Seesaw money. Fourstatesonesource.org is the DRWI webpage. Feel free to check it out. This Enviro DIY and community science effort is just the one small component of the of the DRWI of the broader DRWI. Consortium for Scientific Assistance to Watersheds um, is a PADEP Growing Greener grant um, that allows the Stroud Center to provide support to watershed groups within the uh, uh, within Pennsylvania. So be in touch if you um, are not part of DRWI and would like assistance um, from the Stroud Center. So these monthly meetings, as we know, are just a time to check in, uh, present uh, information, talk about questions, uh, report issues. Um, we do provide updates. <clears throat> we have these presentations. It's all just to support gathering good data and using it purposefully. Um, I'm Dave Bressler, Rachel Johnson, Krista Reeves, and Shannon Hicks are all uh, closely involved with uh, the community science efforts and the Enviro DIY efforts in the Delaware Basin. Carol Armstrong and George Seeds, Master Watershed Stewards, same thing, supporting the Stroud Center in these efforts. And then John Jackson, Matt Earhart, and Dave R. Scott are the DRWI leads at the Stroud Center. So our primary goal from the Stroud Center perspective uh, is to support uh, watershed groups in using data for their own uh, purposes and just supporting groups in general to build capacity, um, build science capacity. Secondarily, we're developing tools and analyzing data to support those efforts. Um, just as a reminder, the Enviro DIY manual that has been updated, it's um, at the Enviro DIY site. There's lots of materials in here. It's searchable. It's a searchable knowledge base. Take advantage of that. Um, and then there's all kinds of guidance materials. In addition to the, um, the videos of these meetings, there's all kinds of other materials associated with Enviro DIY and monitoring in general on this web page. So please check that out. Um, some updates. As we know, as I think most folks know, uh, there's a lot of these salt snapshots happening. Um, the Stroud Center has been facilitating these at a lot of different levels from just kind of general guidance to actual on-site facilitation. So be in touch if you would like to um, do one of these events we can assist. Um, there's formal instructions which can be uh, modified um, according to specific situational dynamics of what's necessary. Um, <clears throat> and then doesn't seem like this is really um, happening, but manage my watershed. If you have follow-up questions or general, even more so generally freshwater ecology questions, 
feel free to post them on Manage My Watershed. Um, and that's it for our introduction and updates. Uh, any questions at this point? Okay. Um, so I'm gonna talk about this planning for the meetings, these monthly meetings this year. So we basically have some of the meetings lined up, some we don't. Um, the idea here was to be a little more proper a little more formal, um, a little more organized about um, planning these meetings and planning uh, presentations for these meetings. So we're going to discuss monthly meeting content um, and possible presenters, volunteers needed. Um, and then we're going to discuss this uh, organizing the subcommittee afterwards. But for now, let's do the um, let's do the monthly meetings topic okay so this is the general gist we're going to talk about uh in these meetings we're going to talk about topics tied to enviro diy so water temperature thermal pollution and conductivity within these two topics we've lined it up to have presentations in the spring and the fall to address these one presentation is going to be the science of stream water temperature and recent advances. That's gonna be by John Jackson. And then we're gonna talk about the following month, we're gonna talk about monitoring of water temperature methods, continuous data, snapshots, et cetera. And the same format for conductivity in the fall with John and, um, and David B, me uh, doing the presentations. There's also an opportunity today, today to feed in on other topics uh, to, to address in these meetings. Um, and then such as those being done by individual groups. So if you have something you'd like to report on, you have an opportunity to, to do that in um, these meetings. And then possibly just miscellaneous requests on uh, different types of topics. So, um, <clears throat> What we've got planned right now is this is the list. So January, this is today's meeting. February, this is one that has not been defined. This is a suggested topic of talking about winter salt spikes in the DRB. So this would be sort of a uh, you know late winter kind of update on what has happened this winter. March, we've got Alan Hunt with Muskingum Kong Watershed Association, who's gonna talk about forming Watershed Council. This ties in with the, with the focus group subcommittee conversation that we're gonna to have today. And then, as I mentioned, we've got uh, John Jackson, who's gonna talk about, in April, is gonna talk about the science of stream water temperature and recent advances. And then I'm gonna talk about <clears throat> monitoring of, of temperature and what to do with the data. So. Hopefully, what we can do if this subcommittee focus group um, takes off, hopefully they can feed back um, to us at the Stroud Center, and we can tie that information into um, this type of presentation and into this exact presentation itself. Um, June is another open month, so we're going to have an opportunity for you to feed in on topics for that and volunteer. If you'd like. Um, the uh, July proposed presentation here is an actual bigger presentation from the focus group. We can talk about that um, as to whether that seems like a good uh, timing for that. Uh, August is sort of a similar um, format or proposed similar format to this one here in February in which towards the end of the summer, we start talking about what has happened this summer in terms of water temperature. So there's opportunity for someone to um, uh, volunteer or, or people, groups of people to volunteer to report on water temperature um, in their regions or at their sites. Uh, then we get into the two seasonal presentations with John, again, talking about the science of salt pollution and recent advances. And then I'm going to, again, talk about monitoring of salt pollution and what to do with the data. Again, hopefully getting some um, guidance from the uh, policy practice focus group. Then November, we have a, uh, another 
another open topic area, which you're going to get to feed in on the um, on the um, poll. Then in December, I think next December, we should do this type of planning uh, at the end of the year. That meeting is December 21st. I am suggesting that we move it to December 14th. I'll probably just go ahead and do that at some point and assume that that's going to work better for people. Um, so <clears throat> same list of um, um, monthly topics with the ones that are, that are sort of open at this point, um, bolded, okay? So just take a look there to revisit and start thinking about keeping in back of your mind, think about a little as we go through this. Um, <clears throat> so right now, um, I think we should, I'm going to, grab the um, survey link and put it in the chat. And I'd like to ask folks to complete that survey right now. Um, it shouldn't take long and you can have an opportunity. We'll leave a certain amount of time to do it now, um, but you'll have an opportunity to continue it later if you need. So. I'm going to put that in here right now, and I'm going to time it. Let's take maybe three minutes to go through and start that that survey. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it or not, but I just sort of wanted to get some feedback right now uh, on that. So just go through that. You'll get an email back where you can edit your responses. So just Get that filled out now, if you don't mind, and then we can return to it. You can return to it later if you want to refine your responses. So we'll just take a pause. I would play some music, but I don't have anything handy. Hey, David, could you uh, pull up the list again and have that shared? It references specific months. So Great idea, useful. Ian. Thank you. Appreciate that. How's everyone doing? Everyone getting a pretty good response together? Not too many questions, so hopefully it's not too overwhelming or anything. Um, all right, I think it's been a couple minutes, so let's move on. Go ahead and keep the survey open if you want, or just go ahead and submit and you'll receive an email and you can continue to edit your responses, build out your responses if you like, okay? Okay, so let's move on to um, this discussion about this local policy and practice focus group or subcommittee or whatever we decide to call it and um, whatever we determine it to be um, functionally. So from my standpoint, um, from our standpoint, I should mention Ian and I um, had some conversations. Ian's kind of in a position with his um, work with Lapat Concrete Initiative and the New Jersey Highlands Coalition to spend time on this type of topic. So uh, he was able to spend some time with me to 
kind of build out some of this language and what our intentions were um, for the for the group. So intention of the group, form a focus group or subcommittee to address the desire of many watershed groups to understand and influence the policies and practices of their local municipalities. Goals of the focus group would presumably be build and document knowledge on how local government functions. And going beyond that, build and document knowledge of how to impact local policy and practice. And then <clears throat> storing this stuff away, building and documenting guidance and repositories of this information on these topics to help others. So learning within the group about the local government functioning, about how to influence municipality functioning policy practice, but then also, um, you know, making a repository of this information so that it's accessible and usable by others. Um, some key points here. The foundation of the focus group knowledge should be from firsthand experience. So the idea here is to get folks involved, hopefully leaders of the group, organizers of the group who are working firsthand in these um, situations, interacting with local government, so that they can really talk about what has worked and what hasn't, and so that we can learn about su successes and failures. Um, uh, of folk I have a question. Uh, uh, Grace? Uh, keep, keep finish up because I, I have some real questions on the first um, two bullet points, but it can continue. Okay, thanks, Grace. Um, so in the, uh, uh, th what this uh, here in parentheses, parentheses is alluding to, of focus group participants and of other experienced people. So the idea is to have this, this subcommittee focus group um, with experienced people, as well as with people who want to learn and want to give feedback on the questions they want to answer, the, the support they need, but also possibly organizing within the group to bring in um, other people who have information that the group doesn't, speakers to pr possibly do presentations for the group or uh, presentations that might be facilitated to for the group to advertise to the broader community to across the DRB, for instance. Um, so <clears throat> again, composition of the group, um, Ideally, there's going to be first people with firsthand experience, um, and then there's going to be people who are sort of just getting into this and trying to understand how it all works, how they can make best use of their data, how they can, um, you know, interact with and potentially influence um, the decision making process in their local communities. Um, just some general logistics to, to think about. Um, I think ideally the group is independent of this group here for this meeting, um, independent of the Enviro DIY and monitoring in the DRB network, um, but collaborative with the group, collaborative, collaborative with the Stroud Center and collaborative, collaborative with the network. Um, I think we were thinking that monthly meeting for the, for the subcommittee would make sense. Um, we're going to do a survey today um, to get people on that list and to get hopefully get folks who are interested in being organizers and leaders of this group. Um, Stroud Center can help facilitate. Um, you know, we can provide the, the Zoom, the Zoom um, room. Um, and, and I'm certainly planning to be involved and others may be involved. Um, to kind of give feedback and help with organizing, help with um, just facilitating. But I think the idea, ideally the group is really led by um, people in the watershed groups who are the ones that are interacting directly with these municipalities and trying to really make change within their communities. Um, so, 
little bit wordy here, but let's go through this. So the focus group subcommittee could support watershed groups via, for example, um, people in the the people in the water from the watershed groups get involved directly. So you know that simply means signing up to attend these meetings, signing up for email updates, et cetera, and attending the meetings, contributing to the meetings, providing feedback, thinking about what you what you uh, in your situation need, and you know posing questions to the group to hopefully get some information for yourself. Um, and things like identifying key topics, like, you know, what, what do you particularly need to really make the best use of your data in your local context, or how do you make best use of your data in your local context? Many different topics that could be addressed in this group. Um, and certainly those types of things are going to be the, are, are going to be the top, are, are going to be teased out, I should say, in those meetings themselves. As I mentioned, the, the focus group could also facilitate presentations from outside speakers on topics of interest. Um, <clears throat> could all, hopefully, the group will, will be able to provide brief monthly updates in these meetings. So I give those Stroud updates, hopefully, in future um, Enviro DIY and the DRB monthly meetings, the focus group can provide updates, just brief updates. Um, and I mentioned providing feedback and collaboration with folks like me and John Jackson in um, kind of putting better context to our presentations on these specific topics like temperature and salt. Um, <clears throat> and then also, as I indicated in that uh, year long kind of list of monthly presentations, possibly doing a presentation, um, you know, a bigger presentation on what the focus group has found. Um, so again, yeah, possible focus group topics. Again, the idea here would be to, to really tease these out and brainstorm in the group itself. But I already mentioned, you know, these two topics, water temperature and salt pollution, and tying these into those present these topics into those presentations in the spring and the fall um, with information from, from the focus group. And then general topics like using your own data at the local level, using existing data such as PFAS, PCBs, et cetera, um, and just you know, teasing out general questions and really just allowing the, the, the time um, to, to get organized and brainstorm and dialogue about what people need in this context. So sort of just a starter list of the types of groups that uh, could potentially be involved to support, um, you know, gathering the knowledge that is, that is needed to do what the focus group um, wants to do. Delaware Riverkeeper, Clean Water Action. Some of these groups have experience already and have done this type of stuff, have experience in these um, topics, different topics. American Literal Society, Penn Future could be a good resource, Pennsylvania Environmental Council, Delaware Nature Society, League of Conservation Voters, Sierra Club PA, and Jack could be a good one and others. So again, the idea would be to kind of tease all of this stuff out in the first couple meetings of the, of the, um, of the focus group and really come up with the mission, vision, et cetera. Okay, um, so time for survey. We are at three o'clock. So let's do this survey. Again, it should be a survey that doesn't take very long. So let me just go here and grab my survey link. I'm gonna put it into the chat. Oops, second here. Okay, so this is just your, this is again, a very short survey. All you're really gonna do is just click yes or no to, to your level of involvement of being on the email distribution list or being a leader and or being a leader of the group, organizer of the group, et cetera. 
Um, you can also volunteer other people if you know of people that would definitely be like to be involved, um, but aren't here on the meeting today. So let's take a couple minutes and um, just go through that again. Once you submit it, you'll get an email and you can go back in and edit your responses if you if you need, especially if you have if you talk about it with your colleagues and find that you have others that would like to be on this list, you can go back and edit the the um, the form. Okay. So I will bring up, go back to screen share, bring up that survey screen. We'll just take a couple minutes to go through the survey. Okay, right, we'll take about another minute. And of course, you can always just reach out to me um, if you have any questions about any of this. Um, hopefully, we'll have a group assembled soon that can field general questions from the broader group of participants on all of these types of topics and really get some legs to this group. Okay, so let's, um, just gonna go through a few more slides here and then we can, then we can discuss. Um, so these are our next steps. These are our, our basic next steps for the, um, the focus group or what I think Ian and I thought as the simple next steps. Um, so certainly just we want to plan a first meeting, especially for those who want to serve as leaders organizers. Um, the first meeting may just be those folks who, who want to serve in that role. Um, and then from there, plan a standard monthly meeting with a standard date and time. Um, <clears throat> and then within those, um, those initial kind of probably the first quarter of meetings, I would guess, solidifying a mission, vision, and goals. Um, you know, considering who, if the focus group reports to anyone specifically, certainly I think we're hoping for some kind of interaction with um, this Enviro DIY, DIY and monitoring in the DRB group. Um, but that can all be kind of teased out in those meetings. Um, and then certainly planning specific topics. Um, hopefully there's, we can work towards, um, you know, some feedback in the spring on temperature and some feedback in the fall on salt. But there's plenty of other topics that I think can and should be addressed in this group. And then there's simply, then there's simple kind of just, things like this where it's like, well, what, what do we come, come up with a name? What should a name be for this? You know, we certainly want it to be descriptive and, and, and then, you know, what type of group is it really? Um, you know, subcommittee, I guess, kind of implies that it would be a subcommittee of this um, Enviro DIY and monitoring in the DRB network which is fine if we want to do it that way, or it could just be, I guess, focus group, maybe just sort of, is it makes it a little more independent sounding. Um, Kim so. suggested a work group, which is very nice. I think that that fits very well. <laughs> work group, good, yeah. good, good. Yeah. A focus so, group just makes me think of something different, like a focus yeah. group to, um, you know, evaluate uh, a product or mar a marketing thing, you know. Gotcha, perfect, thanks, Kim. Um, so yeah, that type of, you know, I think those types of things are important to um, consider because they're going to kind of, you know, it's the title. It's what the, it, it implies intention. Um, so that's great. Thank you, Kim. Um, okay, so 
I'm just going to go through these last th couple things. These are actually, these could be in the update section from today. Um, but I'll just go through these and then we can just go and discuss what I've presented here. But as it so happens, um, the Muscanet Kong Watershed Association's Watershed Allies training, um, <clears throat> one of their trainings is on Thursday, February 16th. And Krista, if you could post the link for this event in the chat, that would be great. Um, the uh, MWA Executive Director, Thomas D'Alessio, um, will be giving a workshop on municipal engagement. <laughs> so it's all coming together um, pretty, pretty nicely. So um, certainly folks can feel free to attend that. We'll an announce that in next month's meeting, which is on the 16th. Um, that will be in person uh, at the Muscanet Kong Watershed Association River Resource Center um, up in northern New Jersey. So feel free to sign up for that. Here's another presentation that's happening uh, on January 24th, so just next week. TU Town Hall, Steve Moyer reflects on 30 years in conservation advocacy. I don't know a lot about this, but this certainly seemed applicable. Um, so I don't have a link to that here, but I think if you just type in Town Hall Steve Moyer or Trout Unlimited Town Hall Steve Moyer, it'll take you to that. Let me know if you need a more direct link. And then um, this is another uh, presentation from the New Jersey State Planning Commission. Again, it's next week. Um, I don't have a direct link. That probably a lot of folks on this meeting have that. That was distributed via the DRWI, um, um, whatever it's called, base camp. Um, so feel free to look into that. Again, that sort of uh, ties in with this whole subcommittee work group policy, local policy practice topic. Okay. So uh, that concludes what I have on the local policy practice work group, subcommittee, etc. So we have about 22 minutes to discuss. Um, certainly we can keep it to that topic or we can talk about any other issues or questions that folks might have. Any feedback at this point? Jim, you're raising your hand? Yes. Um, no, I, it probably, I think it's on your next topic, really, is uh, presentations. Great Marsh Institute had a meeting with some professors from Westchester University and Franklin Marshall. Um, and Basically, we were looking for grad students to use all the uh, data we've collected with the Mayflower uh, units, which we have a lot of data. We want to do something with it. So uh, the result of that meeting was two uh, graduate students. Uh, one will be working more in the hydrology of the Great Marsh, but the other uh, and the professor involved is Megan Fork, who's very much into um, anthropogenic influences, i.e. salt runoff. So uh, I was suggesting if these graduate students actually do get their thesis done, the master's thesis this spring, that would probably be a good topic. And also if this policy committee set up, uh, get Megan Fork, uh, Dr. Fork is a professor at Westchester, but that's her subject is uh, basically road salt, anthropogenic influences on water quality, I think is the long title. So I thought I'd just toss it out. Uh, and I see- Jim, did you put that in the- Our you... SOB committee is here, Robert Johnson, who is here. There he is. He turned his picture Jim, off. So, Jim, if anyway. you, did you suggest that on the survey? Uh, I think so. Okay, I guess, good. I mean, yeah, we are we are working with Megan presently. Um, we're yeah. actually we're actually um, working. George Seeds, uh, Megan, and I are facilitating a big salt snapshot, 105 sites in in the Westchester area, Westchester, PA area, 
um, ne starting next week. Actually. Oh, okay. You're so, way ahead um, of me. <laughs> so, so we are we are talking with Megan. I'm glad to hear that she's working with you as well. She's she's really uh, making an impact. So it's great to hear. I also have connections at the um, in the GIS world at uh, Westchester University. So if people want to make a map, I can reach out to people there. Oh um, wow! So just let me know, and I could try to reach out. That's great. Thank you, Ian. Um, uh, David, I'd, I'd, I'd like to, I can only speak from our local experience with the municipality. Uh, it, what you have is very daunting, basically, when you have, uh, I don't know about any of the other groups involved, but when you have limited people working on this who are very local and, uh, from your first page, I don't know if you can bring up that slide with build out the, they were um, bullet points. Um, I, I, it's, it's overly ambitious for, I would say many uh, rural uh, municipalities, uh, which rarely have outside speakers and which are not always welcoming. Uh, they have very low community engagement. So it seems to me that the more local you get with groups, just a handful getting together and, um, and, and asking the town if they would have a hearing. Many of these presentations cannot be so, unless you cannot be so thorough, you might be given 15 minutes. And um, you may have no feedback. So I would suggest that there be a couple of pilot projects that are locally oriented um, by people who are in the watershed. Anybody from our group, Adair Park Rural Alliance or New York Envirincom, they, prob they probably know us. There's no way we can separate us from what we're doing on other work. They know we're, we're doing mo monitoring work and our work is publicized. But in terms of, 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 of we can introduce issues and then say, are you interested? Uh, but there is very, uh, to have all these process, which I find very bureaucratic, frankly, I don't mean that as a real a criticism. We have very, very limited time and resources because we're doing other things particularly getting involved in the watershed. And this overlaps with watershed education. One thing that is overlooked is that I think community surveys um, online or even snail mail are absolutely critical. Finding out, particularly when you, do, you have a population that has low electoral, electoral turnout and only people only show up when they have an agenda issue that impacts them. Uh, there is no programming or use of the big senior center, which is empty most of the time uh, for uh, community education on the environment. And rather than just coming in as an outside group, uh, say, can we have it? We can have it free. And, and do presentations in which sometimes the town would show up, shows up to these things or doesn't. So uh, my suggestion is, uh, I guess for the next meeting is to look at these things as, as um, less involved. It's just, it just, it was very daunting to me to see all of this with all of the different groups one would have to reach out to for information. So, so Grace, I think there's, I think maybe I didn't communicate that clearly. There's no intention, I think, to, to reach out to those groups to help, 
to, for them to communicate with your municipality. The idea was to reach out to those that groups I'm aware of. To, I ed to educate the, the subcommittee itself so that right. the subcommittee can then go out and do what they want to do themselves. There's Ian, go ahead. <laughs> so the, the intention here is that um, trying to create a group of uh, a, a repository of information and of experience where um, people like myself, I'm the Lepacton Creek Initiative project manager. Um, I'm going to be, I, I'm learning the position, but I also am going to be very active in the Lepacton Creek area, but I can't be everywhere at the same time. And there are multiple municipal hearings, uh, information sessions, it'd be very useful for me to be able to train people who know how to speak to the data, how to, where their points of contact and interaction are at the decision-making process. So creating this um, less of a manual, but more of a, a repository of information that teaches people where they can interact in these processes what is useful to sway minds and uh, grab ears that are on those environmental commissions, the planning boards, uh, the, the various levels of local government, um, whether it's for fighting against uh, warehouses or um, influencing um, salt, uh, salt management, right? Or, or thermal pollution, these different topics that we have set out that our uh, that our Enviro DIY sensors can can gather with their data. How do we use that data to start influencing the minds and the ears of the people who are actually putting in action these policies, who are making these decisions about what goes forward with planning in the area? Um, so rather than the presentations being for the individual municipalities or the individual planning boards it's educating us as a part of this work group on the areas where we can channel our energy uh, most efficiently and and to make those those changes um i i say that's very ambitious from my experience getting even our own volunteers together to work on maintaining our stations, getting to meetings, uh, going on webinars, and the endless webinars, the uh, outreach is when you have very limited human resources that I think a scaled back version for a community such as ours or other communities, you do a pilot program, see what the capacity is within a municipality and um, so that they come back for more. You do it as an intro. I mean, there are many ways of, of introducing this, but to spend a lot of time educating the people who are already involved, who have been to, uh, it seems to me, um, I, I, I don't know whether that can, can be a, a fully done. Well, um, Grace, that's, that, I, I think we all appreciate that feedback, but I don't think we need, I mean, I think the point of the, you know, I don't think anything has been determined. So those are, that's definitely the type of stuff that I think can be discussed you know, once we start the the actual work group or something and 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 lay out vision, mission, goals, et cetera. Um, so we're at three twenty. Let's uh, Carol, I know you had you were raising your hand. Yes, I, I just want to you know, yeah, I think at the very least it's information the, the group could bring together information that might be inspiring or helpful or give an example or something like that. But I raise my hand because I think uh, I you know there are some pretty big differences state by state regarding how municipalities work, uh, how powerful they are, how government sees environmental issues. And I wonder if there should be a, um, PA and New Jersey subgroups, maybe <clears throat> at certain times they could 
share in some way, um, because that doesn't mean that we can't learn, for example, you know, Pennsylvania is a more conservative state. That doesn't mean that we can't learn something from what New Jersey is doing, or Pennsylvania may have done something that was helpful. So maybe a way to cross fertilize, but I, I suspect that the issues we're going to face on the municipal level are going to be very different. And that was brought up in our discussions between David and myself that um, the different uh, states have different procedures which they um, tend to use in different points of interaction. Uh, but yes, I agree that having a, a subgroup of of the of the work group may be useful in um, focusing the consolidation of information. But uh, uh, do you think? Uh, that there's a commonality amongst all of bureaucracies. I tend to think that. Um, my experience is in New York, a little in Pennsylvania, um, in, in different counties, Sullivan County and in Orange County, it's a home rule state. So one town can be very environmentally aware and the next is not. I think that's that's across the country. And so it's, it, you if, if you're speaking before a municipality that you are familiar with, that they know you, you, you know how they operate, or you're, uh, or two or three, you go to do presentations at two or three uh, within the uh, different counties. Um, and I'm thinking right now, Ulster, uh, uh, Sullivan, and, and New York, um, even within Pen Pennsylvania, uh, how they listen, how engaged they are in other business in the, in the town. There's a, a lot of uh, what I consider low wattage engagement. Uh, and that is, that is the rub. And that, the, that's the real core of any meetings with our, our environmental watershed water people uh, to, to, Yes, to, to, to get the attention, but it cannot seem like outsiders coming in on any right. on any level. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, that's uh, uh, that's my cab uh, caveat that I think it has to be simple, and we'll discuss that later in in different meetings. Yeah, I don't think there was any intention to have outsiders coming in. No, no, no. I I, I know, so. but often you get challenged on things that you would not think you would be a challenge. Gotcha. So. Um, Kim Hatchadorian. Hi. Yeah, thanks, Dave. Uh, for those of you who may not know me, um, I work for the Nature Conservancy and I coordinate a group of volunteers in um, northern Delaware, the Stream Stewards, several of whom are on this call. And I just want to express um, support for this idea. Um, I think it's exactly what we need. Um, and I hear you, Grace. It's it, uh, all the challenges and caveats you raise. It's, I mean, it, it's, I'm just glad we're making a start. I need, I think we need to figure this out. Um, we need to figure out, because ultimately I think that's that's what we're all interested in, right? Is using our data um, to, to improve water quality and to improve watershed stewardship. And we need to be influencing policy to do that. So, and I think many of us are um, not, um, don't know how to do that. <laughs> so I think that we're starting to figure that out and make that connection and, and bridge that gap, I think is really what we need to be doing. But I definitely um, agree that there are, and, and that in terms of who who is the best who is best poised to do this? In a lot of ways, it seems like, well, we are, right? We, you know, we have um, volunteers, community members who see, who are, who are discovering firsthand through data collection and, and monitoring what is going on in their local streams and, you know, what, what are causing those impacts and what are the causes of, of pollution and have very clear ideas about what needs to be done to rectify that. But that doesn't mean we're necessarily the best qualified to um, communicate to uh, decision makers about it. So what are what are the skills we need? Or maybe we do need to bring in different types of people with different skills. But again, I think that's something that we can discuss and figure out. Um, that's something I'm very interested in. And to that end, I suggested as future topic for this group, um, data visualization and data communication and storytelling. Like how do we 
Um, I think we, we're used to talking to each other in very technical terms and we look at a graph and it's perfectly clear what this is showing and what, what should follow from this information. But um, I think we need to learn how to um, maybe communicate differently in a way that's compelling to, um, to the decision makers. So, so I, I just, I just wanted to say, I'm very, I'm, I'm excited about this. Um, and I, you know, we'll, I, I, I think that the, the challenges are real, but we need to be making a start. Uh, apropos of that, George Schuler uh, did um, uh, from, you know, George, uh, probably a nature, from the Nature Conservancy, um, did a wonderful visual presentation uh, about watersheds uh, last night for the Never Sink Watershed um, initiative management, and which were, were they were stunning, and it's 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 it can just be bonk bonk bonk, and it has a very dramatic impact, and and in a way that you back you sit back and you say, ah, aha, that's what's about. And, it's, and it can be done in a very abbreviated form. And sure, if we could probably adapt some of those, uh, as those graphs, but yes, it takes a technique and it takes, um, and it takes patience and also um, not hat in hand uh, to a certain municipalities, but um, a, uh, a light touch, basically. Good. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Kim. Appreciate that. And I notice um, that's a Delaware person. That's a New York person. Ian's a New Jersey person. And we've obviously got quite a few PA people that I think are going to feed in on this. Carol is a PA person. So we've already got all four states taken care of. Um, you're at 327. Can I just ask, so are you foreseeing four subgroups based on geology? Well, I don't know. I was just acknowledging that and I thought it was neat that there was people from each of the four states that just happened to talk right now, right in a row. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, yeah, I mean, maybe that would make sense and maybe that allows for sort of really better thinking about these issues because of um, just that so-called cross-pollination type approach to things. Who knows? Um, we don't really know how this is going to go or how well it's going to go, but I think, as Kim said, we need to do something. Um, David, George, I see you just turned your video on. Did you want to yeah, say I just, something? I just I wondered, David, if you and Ian had any thoughts on what is an optimal size for your working groups? What, what, what's too big? What's too small? What, where, where, where do you think the, what's the happy spot for you? Ian, do you want to? Sure. Uh, we, we, we talked very briefly about this and we never really came up with like a specific figure, but um, given Carol's recommendation of four subgroups uh, right now, I, I, it really depends on how many, how much interest we have garnered and uh, how we want to subdivide the work group to mm -hmm. work most efficiently. Yeah. Um, so that's a long way to say, I don't have an exact answer for you. All right. It could be it could be something, David, that you know the, the organizers or leaders of the group meet monthly, and then there's a broader meeting for everyone interested on a quarterly basis, uh, something like that. Who knows? I mean, I think that's the type of stuff that I, I I think will probably start to address at the beginning, and then maybe kind of will shift and change over time as it evolves. Yeah, that's part of the scope that I had in mind for the the first meeting of people who, um, like like David mentioned, have more of that firsthand experience and who would be willing to be a part of the the leaders. Um, that's part of these decisions that we would be discussing. Yeah. I think uh, you know probably there are a lot of people like me that think this is extremely important and. Uh, um, at the same time, would like to, to have the folks like you that have the expertise help with the framework, and then we can see how we can be a value in, in sort of then developing that or seeing where our skill sets would fit into that broader picture. So I, I think it's very important, and, I, and I'm glad you're pursuing it. So. 
Great. Thank you, David. And, and the type of feedback, I mean, you and I have worked fairly closely the last year or two, and the feedback that you give and the questions you ask are important because it's, you know, you're spending a lot of time on it. And so that I think the questions that you ask are representative of what a lot of people are thinking, you know, and I think that's, that's an important component of this group about like, you know, bringing people up and, and giving people the information that they need to, to move in the directions that they, they want to move in, in their own local situations. Would we be able to rely on some of the technical expertise um, at Stroud? Yeah, I mean, I think Stroud will continue to support, you know, groups in whatever way possible with science exper expertise, with data expertise, and so on. Um, you know, so, yes. <laughs> Uh, okay, like uh, putting together a, a 10 minutes, a slide presentation, utilizing what we have decided on all of that, that would be great. We have a, a IT person, but he's, you know, have heavily involved in. Uh, uh, other yeah, and, and Grace, Bert, Bert and I have talked about this type of thing in terms of being strategic about your data gathering and, and um, certainly we could go another step with how to present the data and you know, as, as Kim mentioned, you know, trying to visualize it in ways that are just super clear. And, you know, maybe we don't even know entirely what's best in terms of, of, of that, you know, maybe, maybe there are kind of ways that we could be doing it that are even better and that are going to communicate the information even more clearly to those people who are totally, totally like outside of this science and data realm of things. That's critical. Yeah, great. Yeah. yeah, I noticed that a lot of the organizations that you had listed as possible kind of advisors were advocacy organizations, which is a piece that we haven't brought in before. Yeah, and that's just a list, Carol, and you may have plenty of others. You know, that was just sort of to get our brains gone. That was certainly not a, intended to be a comprehensive or, you know, in, 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 in any way a comprehensive list or even a, or in any way, a best list. Um, well, we are at 332 right now. We can continue um, chatting if folks want, but um, I well, think I will stop the recording if that's okay with everyone. And those who wanna stay on a little longer can. Does that sound all right? All right, I'm stopping recording.